I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. I had this idea, I'm gonna do a book. I'm gonna make an Inkscape project book. It's gonna have 25 tutorials to help you learn Inkscape taken from videos in the first two years of this channel. And why not make the cover design, show you the workflow of that in a tutorial also. We'll focus on two key skills, masking and clipping, and answer the question, what's the difference? Today's video is sponsored by Fiverr, and you know, of course, I wanna do the cover myself and the interior, but there's a lot of moving parts to the book. I wanted to include a one sheet infographic of some of the key Inkscape keyboard shortcuts. I gave the assignment to three Fiverr graphic designers to see what they would come up with. After we do the book cover, I just wanna get your opinion. Whichever one you feel like is the best, that's what's gonna go in the book. First, I wanna show you a mini example on the difference between clipping and masking. This is from Alex, the ENTP. What's the difference between a clip and a mask? Well, for Alex and anyone else, this is for you. Here is a clip. You've seen me use these green shapes I make. It's any shape, any object. You can place it on top of something. This is an image of Earth. You go to Object, Clip, Set. It stamps it out like a cookie cutter. For a mask, it behaves almost the same way. Place it on top of the image. Select both of them. Object, Mask set mask, it looks the same, and here's the confusion. The difference is a mask can be multiple colors. For today and this exercise and the most basic level, think of it this way. Whatever is white is gonna be taken. Whatever is black will not be taken in the mask. Let me show you. Here's a hexagon with white and black. Collect the earth, object, mask, set mask. It only took the white. Also, masking, you can use a gradient. This is gonna go from full opacity to transparency, which is very useful if you wanna get something like this, a faded effect, object, mask, set mask. See, there's more to it than that, but for now, that's all you need to know. We're gonna use both on the book and let's do it now. So let's first, I did some research. Turns out I wanna go with the US trade size, which is six inches by nine inches to set your page to the actual size you want. Go to file, document properties and in your pop-up i want to go to inches for my format and i'll change it to six inches wide nine inches tall i spent a lot of time doing the topography and i thought that might bore everyone let's just go with this is what i chose i can't just throw it on there without centering it up so this right here this is the align and distribute menu you can also go to object align and distribute. I've got it relative to page set. Anything you select will be affected that way. So I'll just center it up on the page. I want the Iron Echo logo to be perfectly centered. So I'll center that. And I do have to eyeball the names, but we're off to a good start. Okay, so let's do the hexagons. I'm gonna cheat a little bit just because I need this hexagon to be this angle to make everything work, but I'll show you how to make it from scratch. Go to your Create Stars and Polygons tool. If I hold Shift and Control, it'll open up a perfect hexagon. I'll change it to white and stroke style will do three millimeters. Now I can do a path effect on it, path effects. Hit the plus to get your path effects menu. Down here, this one called tiling. It's gonna make it very easy for us. We'll go three rows, four columns. Kind of hard to see. Let's move it into empty space. To get them to line up so you don't have this gap here, we can do the offset of 50%. And in the menu, it looks like you can play around with gap Y to make it go up and down, but there's an easier way. Go to edit paths by node and you grab this node right here and you can bring them together. Now I can bring the honeycomb into place right about there roughly. I also did do path object to path to lock it in so it doesn't have the path effect on it anymore. The reason it's white and black is because we're going to do masking at the very end. So control D to duplicate it, put it aside, and we can visualize now what do we actually need here. I just need the stuff inside of the page. If I go up to path, break apart. It makes each of these their own thing. I can remove these extra ones. I think I mentioned it in the exercise. I like to make my clipping objects green. I made a style choice here. I want the three bottom hexagons to actually be chopped and almost look like they were painted in. I like the juxtaposition of the hard geometric shapes with then some more organic paint. To speed things up, I had this from a previous project. I think this was from the graffiti tutorial. The only modification needed is you have to combine it with something solid so it bleeds into the hexagons. This is the size I need. Let's put it into place. Basically, the trick is to take each of these independent hexagons and do intersection with the paint edge. I can't move the paint and it disappears during intersection, so I'll do Control D, click off, click back on just one of the paint, hold Shift 
get this hexagon, path, intersection. For some reason, Inkscape likes to throw a stroke on it, makes it all messed up. Go up to stroke and X out of it. That's what I want right there. To keep it consistent, we'll grab the rest of them. That red line, if you didn't see that, if you hold Alt when you have cursor, you can draw a red line and anything that you touch is selected. Take the stroke off. It's tough to see if I move in, you can see these are the seams of each independent hexagon. And now we can bring in the thumbnail images from those tutorials of past and stamp out the ones that we want. I'll start with the floral. That's gonna go right here. On fill and stroke, we'll cut the opacity and bring it in where we want it. Remember, with clipping, the opacity doesn't matter. It actually makes it easier so you can see through things and see what you're about to clip. I've got the vector flower selected. I'll hold shift, grab my hexagon, object, clip, set there it is <laughs> let's go with this one on the paint to show you how that works cut the opacity bring this right about there hold shift grab it object clip set clip i like it what's next cat time jump got them all clipped out it's fun to think about these different projects we did have you seen all these we can now bring in remember we saved the original. Now this is going to be a mask, so I'm only doing an opacity change so I can see through it to see where it's going to go. I should zoom in and make sure that's pretty close. Okay, so we have the mask. The mask is selected. Hold Shift, Alt. I have the group, Object, Mask, Set Mask. And that's the cover. Now to export this, if I wanna save this as a PNG and start mocking it up like I did in the intro there, here's the quickest export tutorial ever. File, export. On my export menu, I wanna be on page. That will only take what's inside of my page, which is six by nine. Over here, I can choose what I'm gonna export. A JPEG, nope, PDF, maybe. I'll do a PNG and I have to tell it where to go. Directory. This is all the stuff I did. This is all the practice that goes into these videos. Safe. The book cover is the fun part for me. It's walk down memory lane. It's the sizzle, but there has to be good information inside the book. And that's why I tapped Fiverr for some help with that. Here's the request I gave the three different designers. I said, can you make a one sheet infographic of the Inkscape keyboard shortcuts? I attached just the shortcuts I thought were most relevant and I gave them a pretty wide open color palette. Let's go to Fiverr.com. I'll show you the three different designers. And if you don't mind, let me know in the comments which of their work you think is the best and it should go in the book. If you've never tried Fiverr for freelance services, there's tons you can do. I might go when I finish the book and get an editor. It's all sorts of choices. You can check out their reviews, see how they're doing. But for the infographic, the first one I chose was Ali Jelani. Did the standard package, $10. They were super easy to work with. I literally got it back in about less than 24 hours, really. And this is what I got. Now it's not a portrait, that was one of the key components, but you get a couple of revisions. So if this is the one that you end up choosing, I can go back and fix it, but I like it. I like how they have it laid out. These are the shortcuts I wanted to share with you. What I don't like is it gets a little jumbled. I'm not sure I like the crispness of that, but overall for $10 less than a day, this is great. I can print this out and use it and be good to go. But Let's go to the next one. Stepping up the price point, the standard package, $40 from Asif. I will design professional infographic for websites. He didn't follow directions. He didn't give me a one sheet. He gave me a three sheet, but I like it. Here's what he came up with for the tools. Here's the object shortcuts and the zoom shortcuts. I like how he has the actual mouse icon. I like the colors, the background. And actually, if you choose this one as the best, maybe it needs to be three pages. That brings us to the third designer, Babar Mumtaz. This is a premium service. Service, $60. Look at the stuff that they have on their portfolio. Pretty impressive. Maybe I shouldn't have called it an infographic. This is what sold me on his. I wanted something like this. Look at the pop-up. Average response time, one hour. Communication was very good. This was over the weekend and he actually said, hey, can I have a one day extension? I said, absolutely. I'm still recording. And here is the result. Very nice one sheet. It's clear, organized well. I don't like the choice of typeface. Looks a little plain. I can fix that myself. But here's the mouse icon again. And check this out. I was 
actually doing the research of which shortcuts I wanted to include. I didn't know about this one, the back quote. That's when I added to my repertoire, and I hope that by including a one sheet like this in the book, that readers can find it useful in their own workflow. So I'm going to be tapping Fiverr maybe for editing. It's nice to know that the service is here. So if you have stuff that you want to offload, don't go it alone. Go to Fiverr. You'd be surprised in all the different things. There's graphic design, digital marketing. It's pretty much endless. Check it out at Fiverr.com. I'll have a link in the description below or up on the screen here if you want to see what they might have that can help you. Thank you Fiverr for the sponsorship of this video. Thank you for anyone that is voting on which of the infographics you like best. And while you're at it, if you're leaving a comment, do you like the title Inkscape Illustrated? I know you haven't seen the inside yet. When I first envisioned it, I was thinking Inkscape Project Book, but Inkscape Illustrated, I think has a little bit more pizzazz. I don't know. Let me know what you think and we'll see you next time.